What is going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to bring you along for a little tackle organization. So if you guys are kind of getting towards the end of your season, you're probably thinking about organizing tackle. I mean, I, I think that's what we all do when the season ends. At least that's what I do. We're coming up on the close of the season. I do still have a lot of fall fishing that I plan on doing, but right now I wanna make things a lot more efficient when it comes to loading up the boat, getting out there and getting on some fish. So I'm minimizing, I'm downsizing, I'm condensing a lot of my tackle. Normally I'm bringing plain edges, busbies, and maybe even a couple of these like deep flambeau boxes. Uh, and these are mainly more for like the big bait, swim bait, stuff like that. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about how we get this thing condensed, how we organize, how you guys can downsize the stuff that you're taking out on the water. And if you're not taking a ton of stuff, then maybe we'll get some ideas for just tackle organization in general. I've got a ton of different things that I do with my tackle. I do have a lot of tackle. Maybe not as much as friends I have like Tackle Junkie or Bass Geek, but we're approaching that level. So give you an idea of where this stuff goes when it's not getting fished. And if you guys like the content, be sure to subscribe, smash the like, ring the notification bell, all that good stuff. And then come hang out with us Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern. We go live right here on YouTube. All right, let's get into this. I already did one, this is sort of my demo box, and then I'm gonna go ahead and organize a whole bunch of other stuff. But I used to have two 3,700 size Plano Edge boxes for topwater. One was hollow body baits, and one was hard topwater baits. So we switched that up. I actually condensed both boxes into one. I think this will be kind of my do-all topwater box right here. So I've got frogs up on top in the top two rows there. I try to keep those compartments as small as I can and just really smack those babies in there. I do like to roll up the frog skirts as well so they're not over the edge where they can get broken off, things like that. Uh, but we've got a ton of different things in here. I got stuff like the wiggle bomb from Chase Baits. This is just an absurd bait. If you guys have never thrown this, it's pretty cool. It's got a really long tail. It's made of a similar material to like a Laztec. It'll last forever. It is heavy. So it falls in the hollow body bait category, but this is a thing that will like slam on the water, just make a big splash. And then as it's going down, this tail's going crazy. And I've gotten some big bites off this thing. So I do like to keep it on board. It does not mesh well with anything else in here. So it has its own little compartment. And I've got some mini frogs. Got the mini filthy frog here from Guggen Baits. That's not a bad one. I like having like a mini version of like that Strike King fish, topwater fish. Those are sweet. But yeah, we've got that, tataki frog, six cents vega frog. You know we got the spideys in there from the half ounce and the quarter ounce editions. Some popping frogs, some just like, you know, good walking frogs, things like that. So a good mix, a plethora of, if you will, of frogs here. Plenty of options, light and dark colors for any water, right? And the main thing that you guys are gonna notice is it seems like I bring a ton of tackle in. I mean, let's be real, I do. That's why I'm condensing. I need to downsize everything so it's not such a burden to just take this stuff out on the water, but, what you'll notice is I'm gonna have like light and dark, big and small, basically of everything, because on this channel, we like to go explore new bodies of water. So we're not hitting the same lake or stretch of river or creek or bank fishing from the same spot every single week. When Paul and I go fishing, we're trying to go to new spots. And I just moved, so there's still like a ton of spots around here that I haven't even touched. And that's why I wanna have this thing like downsized, ready to go. And what'll end up happening is I was taking them in this XL Cabela's bag. All my tackle fit in here. This will hold like 12 to 14, 3,700 size tackle boxes. And that's too much. So this is gonna stay home now. And ideally, we're taking five to seven in this smaller size bag, uh, which will still hold, you know, a lot, a lot of tackle. So five to seven. Two of which are already taken up that I wanna show you guys. So first up, we got the Plano Edge Terminal Box. Now, I really need like four or five of these. I love these because one, they're thin. So it's not the normal height of a tackle tray that you would normally see with the 3700 size, especially, you know, not like a deep box, right? So compared to that other Edge box, right? It's a little bit skinnier than that other Edge that I have. That's your, your standard Edge versus the terminal, so I like that. Number two, it's got these compartments which are internally sealed as well. So you got your one latch system there, opens over 180 degrees, all of these are closed. 
So that keeps all my hooks and stuff organized. So my organization here, I've got tube jigs, pre-rig Carolina rigs. We got spinnerbait trailers right there. Uh, all my drop shot stuff in these four compartments here from the weights to the hooks. Uh, we got some tube weights up there as well. And then we got all our hooks across this row from fluke hooks to offset worm hooks to EWGs. We got it all covered. We got some wacky hooks in here, just downsized stuff there. And then all the weights are in these cool little compartments up on top, which if you haven't seen them before, they actually slide out. So you can open that up. You got silicone top and bottom. There's all the weights in there. So it keeps it from moving, bouncing around, chipping the paint. I mean, if you use no chip, like Wu tungsten no chip, tungsten weights, that's fine. You're still gonna get just like all this fine dust and powder from them just smacking around in an open box. So I prefer this option here. I know Bass Mafia does it as well. I just liked the Plano Edge box a lot more than the Bass Mafia box. So this is a, a must have for me. It's always going with, so that's one of the seven or so boxes we're gonna take. The next semi must have, I'll say I don't always have to bring this, but the next one I like to bring is my Busby terminal. Now, the Busby terminal holds quite a bit more, but is also quite a bit heftier than that Plano terminal box. So in here, you're gonna see a ton of different stuff. We're getting close now. So we got swim jig heads, we got wobble heads down here and football heads, Tokyo rigs in here, shaky heads, all sorts of different shapes, sizes, colors, uh, underspins, heavy weighted hooks for big swim baits, frog hooks and weightless twist lock hooks. This is my random Nico bait compartment. So just a couple random Nico craws and stuff in there. And then I've got random assorted terminal in here. So one ounce weights that I can use for a Texas rig, Carolina rig. Uh, so all the big weights, they didn't really fit into the Plano terminal box. They ended up in here. We got Nico nail weights in here. We've got clips. We've got uh, some random assorted big neds. We've got tungsten neds in here. So I got two different weights in here. We got finesse eyes swim jigs from Z-Man. Also got the, uh, I think they're the Okashira from Mega Bass. These are sweet. That's in a 1 16th ounce. Got some random spinner baits, some treble hook spares, you know, just different stuff like that. So this is sort of a random assortment, but it's usually like the bigger size, like Tokyo rigs take up more space, bigger size, heavier stuff. So I, ha I have big weights that go up to a 1.75 here. So we got, we got some big stuff in there for like heavy, heavy punching or Carolina rigging, which I don't do that much. So if I'm not hitting shaky heads, underspins, Tokyo, like chances are, I, this is an accessory box I don't have to take. But I do like having this stuff organized in this way rather than having it all kind of bunched up with kind of my go-to baits for the day. I'd rather have it separate. Plus, then I don't have to worry about rusting as much. This box right here is going to be tough to let go of this time of year. So that's all jerk baits. So I think this is going to be a seasonal box, right? And it's okay to have stuff like that. So if you have like a spring, a fall seasonal, if you don't want to spend the money on a Busby or a Plano Edge even, which are really reasonably priced, let's go grab some cheap stuff. Here's a cheap Plano. As long as it's not going out on the water, it's more of a storage bin, right? So I'll keep a couple of these cheaper tackle trays to use for storage for the baits that I'm not using right now. For example, jerk baits, like I just don't use them really in the summer at all. It's more of a spring and fall bait for me, a early and late season bait. So I'm grabbing for this during the fall season. So I'm gonna leave this as is. It's got an assortment of sizes, different weights, floating, sinking, uh, upsize, downsize. I mean, I've got all my options open in here, so it's nice to have that box at this time of year. Okay, so here's where it gets tough for me to downsize. Got a whole square bill box. I got a whole jig box, which by the way, is totally broken. So I don't wanna take this out on the water because it needs to sit up like this. So if it rains at all or gets splashed, I'm just like absorbing water. This is just taking on water like crazy. So that sucks, unfortunately. Um, so I don't like to take this out on the water with me. So now I'm just gonna pre-select like good fall baits, I think from this and leave this main box at home. So we're gonna try to take, I don't know, five to 10 jigs, uh, different assortment here from finesse to football heads, probably, especially for like the river, if I find more cover. And then we're definitely taking chatterbaits. Chatterbait is like one of my all time favorite baits to fish all year round, but especially in the fall, it seems to produce a lot. So we're gonna do that. The same can be said for spinner baits. 
So if you guys haven't seen this box before, this is the Big Mouth box by Flambeau. Um, I broke it. It like fell off my shelf and just broke. So I might need to get another one, but I think they're only like 10 to 12 bucks. So it's pretty well worth it to keep all of that stuff organized. So I don't take these on the boat with me ever, uh, never have, never will. So what I do with this is I'll grab again, like 10 of my favorite spinner baits and they stay in my go box pretty much all year round. I'll never put them away. All right, so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of my crank baits and make one box. So we got lipless, we got shallow diving cranks like square bills, and then we've got uh, our, our deeper diver crank baits. So we're gonna condense these into one and it's gonna look like this. All right, so it took some work, but we got it done. What we've got going on here is much more like craw patterns, dark colors and natural colors than you're gonna see in the summer. In the summer, I might be throwing brighter patterns, a lot more chartreuse, a lot more white, uh, and it changes up this time of year. Sun comes up later, goes down earlier. Uh, typically we're getting a lot of wind and clouds and nasty stormy weather and it's just that way. So we go darker colors on all of these. My favorites being the Quakes and the Snatches from Sixth Sense. So I got a couple of those, but I also got my good old Strike King Red Eye. This one in a red craw. So this red color, this time of year, just bangs. So I wanna have those on deck, ready to rock. Just some of the classics there, some bluegill patterns. There's your sexy shed and some blue chrome, which you can't go wrong with. From there, we got the bigger body, deeper diving square bills. So I've got uh, this nice little, I think this one's called the Swank from Sixth Sense. So it's more of a dive and like float really quick. It's super loud. It's a pretty cool bait. Got a wake bait in there from Six. We got some big old honking Black Magic and Sexy Shed colored uh, silent square bills actually. But those are awesome when you're hunting those big mamas this time of year. Then we've got one of my favorite baits from them of all time, which is that Axis. So I picked one dark color, one light color. And I mean, that'll get it done. Honestly, at the end of the day, if you're looking to downsize your tackle, not take as much out there, and this is still too much, trust me, I know. No, don't, you don't have to beat me up in the comments. I get it. I like what I like. I like to have as much available to me as possible, especially since I don't know what it's gonna be like once I hit the water. I wanna have like all the tools available to me so I can figure it out faster. I'm a kitchen sink angler. That's the way it goes for me, right? But if you guys are downsizing, important things to think about would be cover the water column, right? So anything you can have that'll get you from top to bottom, from fast to slow, from light to dark, and anywhere in between, right? So if you really wanna narrow it down, like one dark bait, one light bait in the same category, we'll get it done. Dark axis, light axis. Same depth in the water column, same action, but different looks. That way, you know, I, I can rule everything out and really narrow the scope on what these fish want after I find them, of course, but what, what do they want? And I can make a few different presentations, vary up my retrieve on them, and boom, what do you know? We're catching fish now. Top row of this box, I've got some blade baits. So this one's a Mega Bass right here. This one's a Rapala. I like this one a lot. It's actually got the two hook for the front instead of a treble, so it gets hung up a lot less. But blade baits, if you're not aware, in that colder water are fantastic. It's got a heavier weight here, and you can see your line tie right there. All you're gonna do is let this fall all the way to the bottom and then rip it back up. Kind of yo-yo it back to yourself at the bank or in your boat. Smaller square bills with the dressing on that back treble, I think are always a good option. I added this treble to a Guggen Banger. This is the, the mid-size banger, two to five foot diver. And then this is the Carl's Bait and Tackle or Carl, Carl's Amazing Bait Runt. And I just realized this treble is bent. People, check your trebles, change them out. So I have to change this out before I fish it. No big deal. Along with that, you guys know I'm a big fan of these right here. These are the Finesse Square Bills from Sixth Sense. So I chose two craw patterns actually. One is more of like a blue-green craw, just different kind of more natural color. And then that bright, boy, I think this is boiled craw, orange and red. So red baits bang this time of year. I'm hoping to get some action out of that. Couple more, we got this Lucky Craft in a lighter color. This one's from our subscriber, Gfon Kim. I like that one a lot. 
And then we've got what they call, I'm not even sure. I think this is a discontinued color, uh, but this is from Sixth Sense. It's as similar to the black magic as you could be, but adding these white lines I thought was cool. So I'm gonna stick with this over the black magic for this size square bill, which is the silent Crush 50X, Crush 50S silent, whatever. So one crankbait box to rule them all. None of this, by the way, includes my go-to boxes, which is pretty much gonna be my last two boxes that I fill here. If you guys are looking to try new things, but you don't wanna take up all your tackle space when you're going bank angling, kayak angling, or out in the boat, try to have like a little stack maybe, work up to having a stack, but start with one box. A trip specific box. And that's this for me. So this is my trip specific big baits box. Big baits for Michigan. Uh, we've got some gill style baits. So if I'm seeing them feeding up on bait fish or I wanna just go after them and just commit, this could be like my one box for the day. But we've got some jointed fish lab baits right there. We've got some jointed wake baits from Six Sense and Fish Lab here. We've got the good old Mega Bass Dark Sleeper. We've got the 10,000 fish head hunter I could throw. We could upsize to a Savage Gear crappie right there is another great option that's a 3d printed crappie that's pretty cool love these these are just speed glides from six cents they're pretty rad so i got again light dark with those go for the mega top water this is only in here it's not going in my standard top water box buka bull shad buka bull gill this one's pretty sweet holographic almost and then I got a light and a dark version of the hybrid swim crank from Sixth Sense as well. Down here, we got the new cycle bait underspin, as well as kind of a couple random baits. So I have what they call the Slamamander from Fish Lab, which is a pretty huge, crazy bait. It's got kind of a paddle tail to it. Uh, haven't quite figured it out yet. We haven't dialed that one in, so we're gonna play around with it a bit. Got that Headbanger Lures swim bait, which is pretty cool. Again, this is more uh, a trip specific box. If I wanna go after this style of fishing, then I'll take this box with me, otherwise I won't. So this one might just stay at home. Same with this one. This is basically the rest of my big baits that I'm just not using. So this is more kind of a spare box, right? Uh, so if I wanna change it up, use kind of these darker imitation sleeper baits, or if I wanna go with a wake bait from fish labs or just different colored hybrid swim crank you know then i might change it out uh, so this is just a holder box mostly because when you're trying to condense tackle taking a deep box with you not the greatest idea or the greatest way to downsize all right i'm starting to feel really good about pulling this off i think we can downsize to six boxes that were taken out with us plus I'm gonna throw this one in. I never really changed this box up. This is my river slash ultralight box. So this is gonna have a lot of my ultralight baits. Uh, we've got everything from 132nd ounce jigs up to kind of the more regular size. I use 332nd ounce jigs to my go-to Ned heads. It's that EWG Ned Locks from Z-Man. Got a couple finesse jigs in there. You know, just the works. Whole slew of these little Guggen micro baits as well. And of course, even the classic Rebel Craw crankbait. So lots of little micro baits like that, plus MEPS, probably my, my go-to bait of all time. So that's, that's a good specific box that I tend to bring with me no matter what. So it's always there. Um, these are a great backup option when you're having a tough day. I know I can catch on pretty much 90% of these things. All right, so the last box we're gonna fill is gonna be my go-to Busby box. We've got this set up in a way that I can fit pretty much everything I'm gonna want in here. We got a spinner bait box right here. We got a bunch of long boxes fit for really anything. And this is the go box. So this is the one that sits up front in the kayak with me that I'm grabbing baits from most of the time. All the other boxes sit in the kayak crate behind me. And the reason I do that is this keeps it simple. And if all else fails, meaning my go-to baits that I plan for for the day when I got to the water and organize this thing don't work, then I can reach behind me and change things up depending on the situation or changing conditions. And I find that to be the most effective and efficient way that I can fish any body of water that I get on, right? So I'll generally have two boxes up front with me. This is the one go-to. And then I'll also have that Plano Edge terminal box up there so I can do anything I want with all the plastics that I bring. All right, you guys, here we are. We've got everything condensed. 
These are all the tackle trays that I'm going to be taking with me at any one point in time on any trip for the rest of the season. And I plan to keep it up kind of like this going into next season as well. And then the last box that we knocked out here is the uh, go-to, right? As well as tons and tons of jigs because I plan on throwing a lot of jigs right now this time of the year, this time of the season. So we've got everything in here from swim jigs with like blades on them and different colors, especially purple in this dirtier water tends to get it done for me. To my chatterbait collection here, we got some reds. There's the Guggen clickbait. Love throwing a good Z-Man jackhammer with that stealth blade. And then we got some darker color jackhammers up here as well. An assortment of my go-to fall season body baits from just like craw pattern square bills to natural cranks and lipless baits and reds and dark colors and naturals. Light and dark poppers up here. We got the six cents axis over here. Craw deep diving crankbaits, flat sided cranks. Got a fantastic topwater here from Arc. Topwater walking and popping bait. Natural lipless, six cents quake. And then this right here is actually an assortment of finesse jigs. Little football jigs, lighter jigs, smaller size jigs I like to be throwing around, especially in the rivers. And then all the spinner baits you could ever heckin' want from white to white chartreuse to natural colors mixed it up between uh, the Colorado blades if you want to have a little bit of a thump to double willow blades to gold and silver blade combos which is a good idea spinner baits and chatter baits have really been some of my best bets this time of year so I definitely want to be packing a ton of those so typically if I'm going bank fishing I'm going to fill this up with everything I plan to use this is probably most likely the only box I really need to take in addition to this terminal box in a backpack so it'd be just these two coming with me, as well as again, one of these bags full of plastics. So there you go, that's all the main tackle. We're gonna talk plastics now. I know to some of you guys bank fishing or something like this might seem a lot, but honestly with the size of my kayak, this is actually like the perfect amount of tackle. This will all fit with plenty of space in my kayak crate and my front bin. So it's not gonna take up too much room and it gives me everything I could possibly need regardless of the water I hit. So I'm really happy with this setup versus the uh, 10 or so boxes I was taking before. This is currently how much I'm bringing. We need to condense this. Let's do that. <sighs> okay, so following similar protocol to the tackle that we just went through, we're going light and dark and just a couple from each category of baits. So mostly I'm looking at worms, Got to have a couple of those trick worms and regular Senko style worms. Just going with some of my favorites. We've got flukes and swim baits. We've got creature baits. We've got beaver style baits and bug baits. And then we're going to have to condense the ultralight bag. Trick worm wise, I love having some purple. This is cinnamon crave uh, would be the color. It's a six cents shaky worm. This is a longer style, seven inches, eight count of that. We got some green and purple candy grass here is also another good option. Uh, again, seven inch. So we got two longer trick worms. Well, three longer trick worms. Here's a natural color. Uh, green pumpkin pearl, by the way, one of my favorite colors to throw around any time of year. Then we went shorter. We got six cents again, shaky worm, six inch now, 6.3 inch. You get 10 counts in these though. Watermelon, green pumpkin blue. Green pumpkin blue is really my go-to. So there's plenty of trick worms for like 75 days on the water. This tub stays in my boat pretty much the majority of the year, so it's okay. This is like my library of plastics. Then we got some Senko style baits. We got the six cents clout, 5.4 inches. Uh, this one's green pumpkin blue. Like I said, one of my favorite colors. Cinnamon Crave, again, another favorite color. You're gonna see some redundancy here. That's the Ned Fry, so it gives you a different, more dense plastic, uh, but it floats pretty well. Then we got grass candy again in the clout 5.4. Wrapping up the worms though, we have something real different, the Zaza worm. It's a six inch worm from Nico Bates. This is borderline indestructible and I just split the colors in this pack. So you got the super stretch worm there. It's also hollowed out and floats really well on a shaky head, it looks phenomenal. So we got black and blue and then what they call eclipse, which is that green copper red flake. As far as swim baits, We've got more of the streamlined swims, like the Razor Shads and a Natty color here from Z-Man. This is a uh, Bad Shad is the color. 
Nice reflective properties, dark upper, light lower. Green Pumpkin Pearl, Gary Yamamoto. This is one of my favorites. This is the Zacco. Then we got one of my other favorite trailers for Chatterbaits here. Kamikaze Swim-Ons from Big Bite Baits. This one's in a Chick Magnet Swirl. Kind of a goby color. A little like tan, gold flake, purple. That one looks good. It's red season, so we got some flamethrower ones as well and that red and orange. We got the classics, super salted Zoom Flukes. These are awesome. That's white ice, one of my favorite colors. We got Disco. These things are pretty fantastic. Disco green. Uh, it's got some green flake. We got some flat nose jerk shads, bubble gum there from Power Bait. And wrapping it up, streaks, different style, just a straight tail jerk bait here. And again, another like ice, white ice color from Z-Man. Trailers and fluke fishing, fantastic for that. It's always a good idea to have tubes this time of year in Michigan. So we got some zoom tubes here, 3.75 inch green pumpkin. We got some venom, nice white tube, always good to throw something different. And then we got secret lures stupid tube it's got like a crazy craw pattern to it uh pretty interesting kind of tube bait in a june bug color so if i need to switch it up and go dark then we get to some creature baits we've got one that i've been working on for a little while i haven't quite dialed in yet this is new from fish labs it's called the slamander and i really just have a, a sample of offerings here but we got like light and dark right a little bit of red mixed into this one this one's pretty cool i like this color a lot Got black and blue, and we've actually got some browns in here as well. So interesting bait, can be rigged a million different ways. Like having something like that on board where I can, you know, if I'm confident the fish are just hitting everything, throw something weird, try something new. Or if they're not hitting at all, try something totally different. We got some bellows craws here, a little chartreuse in that. I like that style. We got the Rage Tail Menace. Rage Tail Menace is a fantastic trailer bait as well as just a flipping bait, downsized flipping bait. And this is in Falcon Lake Craw. It's like a dark red. Six cent stroker craws, can't go wrong. Black and blue there. Guggenbait's Bandito Bug. Honestly, one of the best flipping baits. Uh, not very durable, but it just gets bit. And I chose to go with sprayed lettuce is the color here. It's like this purple green flash, uh, pretty much grass candy. I like it though. These are insane. So we got the Beast Coast Marauder here, which is an awesome little beaver combo craw style bait, slim body to it, long claws on that. These are awesome. Nice natural color here too. One of my other favorite flipping baits here, the D-Bomb from Missile Baits. And my favorite color from them, which is Dill Pickle. And my favorite color from Sixth Sense. Look at that. A little Mexican Spice Stroker Craw. Went with more of the stroker craws. They also sell the prawn, which is like another good option. They're honestly very similar baits. The prawn is just a bit bigger, with bigger flapping claws. And uh, I like the style of the stroker craw a little bit better. Got some random neds in here to try that have a Medusa head to them. Been waiting to try these actually in a green pumpkin color. Check that out. Pretty insane little Medusa head to it. And uh, I believe it's on a VMC jig head. It's pretty sweet. These are from a subscriber, Greg Whitaker. Greg, I swear I'm gonna try these, dude. Uh, they're pretty sweet and uh, they're sitting in the bait library, so they're ready to rock. Kind of a random here, Bellows Gills. I like the smaller size, a little natural color there in blue. And if you guys don't do this with your baits, I don't know what's going on, but some spares from just an older pack there in the back. Okay, bigger creature baits. I don't throw them too often, but I just picked up these Zuchi bugs. These are from 10,000 fish. So I'm interested to try those out. Uh, it's got crazy action. Carolina rigged that black and blue. Good go-to color right now with dirtier water and stormier conditions. I'm just gonna go with that. And then we've got uh, another one I haven't tried too much, which is the Hog Walla from Six Sense. Again, just a nice long like lizard style bait. Can't go wrong. You gotta slow it down, try something different. Throw on a Carolina rig. Got a pre-rig in my terminal box right now, so ready to go. Which brings us to freaking clamshells, man. When you're trying to organize plastics, these are an absolute nightmare. They just take up so much room, they're so bulky. So when I'm trying to store everything in this container, it makes it really difficult, which is why I was having them all in these extra bags, but I'm just carrying too many bags with me. I wanna downsize, I wanna make it more streamlined and easy. That's the whole point of this video, right? So, whatever doesn't fit goes. I'm not taking it. That's what I've chosen to do. So I grabbed a bunch, 
We're gonna see how many fit in here and then I'll show you what we're taking with us. Okay, well they all fit, so I guess we're taking all of them. All right, so swim bait wise, I'm bringing some Nico Winnows. These are basically an indestructible paddle tail. It's fantastic. I mixed up the pack, got a couple different colors here from Milky Way to Lunar. We got the six cents whale if I wanna upsize a little bit, 4.5 inch, not huge, but just enough of a change that it might draw some bites. I like these baits a lot, great action. Uh, balanced really well with those fins on the side too. So we've got two colors here, one with bait juice, it's like a nice natural color, and then something that just stands out like crazy with the sexified shad. So blue chartreuse, you know what they say about chartreuse. Speaking of chartreuse, we got a downsize paddle tail here, which I'm running low on, as you can see. There's a couple left of these, but again, chartreuse in blue with a little black flake in there, and this one is electric blue and chartreuse is what it's called. Uh, but it's the Exo Swim 3.25. We got some Guggen Saucy Swimmers, just a darker paddle tail that I like to throw around. Colors Magic Shad. We got some sexy shads, the fat swing impacts from Kytec. Kytec is a great go-to. Um, these ones I trimmed the package down, but it's again the Exo Swims, just the regular size. Green, pumpkin, pearl. What have I said? <laughs> it keeps coming back up. And then finally, just a darker paddle tail, this like purple and pearl color. It's called Pro Blue Red Pearl. Um, I don't know where the red is, but I like it. It's a sweet paddle tail to throw around with the Exo Swim there. And there you go. Quite a bit slimmed down from doing three bags, plus this being, I don't know, twice as full as it is now. I'm pretty happy with that. Of course, something like this is really nice if you have a kayak that is sit on top and you've got storage in it. So I get it. If you don't have storage, don't bring this much. Instead, minimize and bring a couple of these bags. So these are Monster Bass bags. I get them every month with my subscription. Uh, you can get the Bass Mafia bags, Guggen Squad bags, Six Sense bags. There's a whole bunch out there, you guys. So just check them all out and go with what works for you. Finally, I'm not changing this or putting this into the regular bag. This is my Ned Ultralight bag. So you guys can see right there, it is labeled. This never changes. The reason it doesn't change is because this also goes with me on river trips, just this bag. It's got some smaller like paddle tails in there. It's got my mule fishing. It's got some small tubes. It's got the six inch mini stroker cross. Gonna have a whole lot of shark deuce in it right there. Some craws from Z-Man, which are fantastic. Tons of stuff from mule fishing, which you can see I use a lot of. Even some rattling neds from the Googans. And then some randoms like some Morning Dawn Robo Worms and Morning Dawn Leeches here from Nico Bait. One of my new favorite craws, the Micro Craw, I call it from Six Sense. It's a little tiny stroker, it's 2.4 inches. And then random cheap little paddle tails, which are just good for dirty water on the river. All right, you guys, fall tackle is minimized. I'm pretty happy with this. We got this for the bag now, full with those six boxes plus the river box. We got the ultralight bag. Then we got the kayak plastics. I'd say we're in a pretty good spot. Uh, as I mentioned, I also have like some specific boxes that I don't take with me on every trip. All right, so aside from that, the only other thing I might take would be this specific box right here, which is those swim baits. So if it's a day where I know I could potentially use these, if it's like a pike specific lake or something, then I'm bringing these out. Or I'll grab one of these big ones off the wall and take those with me. You know, they don't live there forever in perpetuity. I take them out if the conditions make sense or if I say we're committing to big baits today, then I'll grab them and take them out. Otherwise, this is just kind of the go-to setup I would say right now. So hey, hopefully this video was helpful for you. If it was, be sure to subscribe, smash the like and ring that notification bell. And then come back Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern. We talk live with some of the best people in the fishing industry. We've had awesome people on like Larry Melton Jr. and Fluke Master. So you should tune in one week and hang out with us. Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern. Love to see you there and talk to you in chat. All right, you guys, I hope you're having a great day and I hope that you get on some fish here real soon and we'll see you in the next video.